What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko and today I'm excited because the other day I actually went to my locals and went undefeated with Dino and in yesterday's video I actually did the vlog where I showed you guys exactly what happened. So if you guys want a more inside scoop as to my matchups, how I won, different things that happened throughout the day, you guys can check out the vlog. I'll link it at the top of the description. But I came first place with Dino. I love this deck. It's seemingly every single time I go to a locals and play Dino, I win with it. I think this deck is absolutely insane. At the end of today's video i'm going to be talking about a little bit of a discussion cards that i chose to play cards that i chose not to play things that i would change as well as things that are going to be happening post photon hypernova so you guys can be prepared for that format now if you guys do enjoy these videos make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu Gi Oh content just like this one guys we upload five days a week here on the channel we're on the road to 10,000, and the goal is 16,000 by the end of the year i know we can make it happen with you guys' help so thank you guys all for watching i really appreciate every single one of you make sure to subscribe if you guys haven't already and with that let's get into the undefeated dino deck profile. All right, so just before we get into the deck profile, I do want to say that because this is a first place deck profile, we're going to be doing the main deck, the extra deck, as well as the side deck, of course. And on top of that, at the end of the video, I'm going to be doing a little bit of a discussion, talking about certain cards that I did play, certain cards that I didn't play, and other things that you can play post Photon Hypernova. Keep in mind, this is, of course, pre Photon Hypernova, but post Photon Hypernova, you do have options in this deck, which is really, really powerful. All right. So, with that being said, let's get started. We are playing the three OV Raptor, of course. This is the best normal summon of the deck. You have to be playing three OV Raptor plus Baby. OV Raptor plus Misk, OV Raptor plus Fossil Dig. That's just full combo for you. You need to be playing it. It's the best dino in your deck. We're playing two Archosaur. You have to be playing two only because you always want one in your deck at all times. You want to be able to, even if you draw one, still resolve it off of the Miscellaneous Saurus. So for that reason, you're playing two. But on top of that, Archosaur is not even that bad to draw if you don't draw your OV, especially if you draw it in conjunction with your baby Ceratosaurus. So we're playing three baby. And I'm going to talk about this ratio or these lineups just in a second here. But you have to be playing the three baby in this build so the reason for that is because this build again like i said is a two card combo build and it's really important to be able to draw any two cards to start your combo so baby plus misc is combo baby plus arco is combo baby plus ov is combo ov plus misc is combo so do you guys see how there's so many different combinations that will essentially get you to your full combo i also like to play the one petite pteranodon petite pteranodon is really important as well there's a lot of boards where you can actually end on petite with a conductor on your side of the field and then you can actually pop this with your conductor on your opponent's turn to Book of Moon your opponent's entire board. And then when you do that, this is going to trigger and get your Pankratops from your deck, which is absolutely powerful. So speaking of Pankratops, we're playing the one Pankratops, of course. This is a blind go second OTK build. I don't think I mentioned that earlier, but you always want to go second. You always want to be able to OTK. And this deck does that super, super well. You can break any board in this deck. And even if you don't, the best part about this deck is being able to break boards. Even if you're not OTK, you just make your own board. So like I said, if you can end on a Petit Tyranodon, then even if you pass it back to your opponent, you get to get to a Pankratops regardless right so it's just very very powerful then we're playing the two ultimate conductor tyranno of course this is your otk machine this card is absolutely insane like honestly this card is probably one of the best boss monsters the game has ever seen you have to be playing two at least i don't think you should be playing three i think two is the perfect number we're playing one giant rex and to round off the dinos we're playing two scrap raptor as well as one scrap chimera i know chimera is not a dino but we're just going to say it here because of the scrap raptor so i'm just going to talk about this just a little bit the really cool thing about this deck is that if you look at most of these cards 99 percent of these cards are not going to be hit with the bestial monsters your babies are all earth your misc is a fire your giant rex is an earth your scrap raptors are earth so all the cards that you want in the graveyard are not hittable by bestials which is so important because bestials are the most important hand traps in the format right now everyone's on them the cards that can be hit with bestials like your arco your ov even your conductor which is a light these cards you don't want in your graveyard regardless so it doesn't really matter that these can hit, get hit with bestials these are the cards that you want to resolve in your graveyard or keep in your graveyard and they're always going to be able to do that because they're not light or dark which is really really powerful and so i think this ratio and this lineup is perfect i don't think i change this up at all giant rex is just way too important for a lot of different combos even though it's the quote-unquote brick of the deck is just way too important you have to play this and then these ratios i wouldn't suggest changing at all so next up we're playing the three fenrir you have to be playing the three i'm going to talk about this in just a second we're playing three ash as well as three imperm so let's just talk about the little hand traps i guess fenrir is not a hand trap but these are the hand traps that i chose to play and the whatever you want to call this the other pancratops in the deck so i'm going to talk about these in just a second you guys can see we're not playing the bestial monsters and the reason i'm not playing the bestial monsters is because decks like sword soul fluanderies all that stuff has become a lot more popular and so for that reason i was kind of thinking like you know what i don't want to lose the flu i don't want to lose the sword soul and you need cards to beat it on top of that 
that I don't know who decided that Fenrir was a bad card and people stopped playing this in their main decks because this card is absolutely busted against so many decks. Yes, against the tier limit matchup, it's even really good as well. If you start your turn with a Fenrir and they try to go Hovenus or whatever they want to do, this card is absolutely insane. 2400 body, it's really, really powerful. I will say this though, I'm going to be honest with you, Imperm was really good for me because a lot of people make Baguska or Dweller and that does hinder this deck a decent amount. So that's why I think Imperm was really good for me. But a card that I didn't like at all was Ash. I played Ash just because it was really generic, but pretty much it got sided out every game two and game three. So these three, I would maybe even suggest playing another hand trap. I would just would take these out 100%. I would take them out. And in my discussion at the end of the video, I'm going to explain more what I would take them out for and different potential. So right now I'm just going to say I played these. They really never came up. I didn't like them at all. These six, I really liked. These three, I didn't. So maybe swap these out for something else. And we'll talk about that at the end of the video. Moving on to the spell cards here, we are playing, of course, three Fossil Dig. Why would you not play three Rota? That's not once per turn, just absolutely broken. Two Double Evolution Pill, you have to be playing the two. I think playing one is okay, but if you draw one, then you can't resolve Arco, so you have to be playing two. We're playing two Triple Tactics Talent. I really like this card. It was actually not bad for me. In general, it's just so good into so many different matchups. So I really like playing the talents. I don't think I changed this out at all. This card was MVP. Oh my God. Three Regeki MVP for me. I literally, every time I resolved this, I was winning the game. No deck can actually play through a Regeki, even the tier limits matchup which you guys can be like oh but if you go Regeki against tier limits and they get all their effects off then they get the fusion summon then they okay who cares like it doesn't matter if you're starting your turn off with a Regeki, you have nothing on board or you have a hand trap at least in your hand like an ash or an imperm or a fenrir on board and then you go Regeki, it becomes so powerful because you're gonna get all their effects off and then you're like okay normal summon ov and then they've already used all their tier limit effects and then you get the full combo and you're going for game so this card is just absolutely busted i highly recommend playing three Regeki in this deck is just so powerful we're playing the one harpy's feather duster of course you want to get rid of back row i hate back row and then okay so i'm going to say this i only have one prosperity i would obviously recommend playing three so i because i only have the one i chose to play two other cards instead i played one monster reborn and one change of heart these should be two more prosperity i just don't have two more prosperity so i played these two and they were fine for me monster reborn was actually surprisingly pretty good this came up one time so it wasn't bad but uh monster reborn and change of heart these two definitely can be swapped out for two more prosperity. I just, you know, I, I didn't have it. So we were playing these two. But yeah, that's that's it for the main deck. It's a 40 card main deck. Moving on to the extra deck here, we are playing the two Dolka. Dolka is obviously very powerful in so many different situations. I would always end on this if I'm not OTK my opponent. If I would break their board and I had two level fours, which a lot of time you guys can do, I would just end on a Dolka because what ends up happening is you've broken their entire board. You've dealt a lot of damage. And then this is just not a once per turn monster negate. It's just absolutely powerful. So I always would end on this. We're playing one Logia, which I never went into. I should have gone into it one time. It didn't really matter in the end game. But at the end of the day, like when I looked back at my match, I was like, you know what? If I had gone into log yeah it might have been a little bit more safe i didn't go into it but you have to be playing this card when it does come up it's just absolutely insane we're playing the one dweller of course the one baguska you need to be playing these we're playing the one dugaris dugaris pretty much helps you otk through prosperity which is absolutely insane we're playing the one savage dragon of course you have to be playing this part of your combo you're always going to end on this when you can it's an omni negate for you and it's a 3000 body so there's no reason not to play this then we're playing the one link Rebo as well as the one secure gardener i would just always want to play these because it helps you get non dinos in the graveyard because we're not playing the bestials it's a little bit harder to get non-dinos so i do like playing these two still we're playing the one pentasteg of course helps you otk through defense position monsters one scrap wyvern of course for your combo one ip mascarina into unicorn this actually came up a couple times so i would actually not cut these at all when your opponent has a ton of hand traps or has a bunch of ways to stop your combos ending on ip plus any monster is not bad into unicorn so i actually still like playing these also i really like unicorn as something that you can go into before you go into access code so you can make a 5300 access code so i really like these two cards and then we're playing the one apple as well as the one access code talker all right so this was it for the extra deck it was perfect for me there's nothing in this extra deck that i was like oh i wish it was something else or i wish i had something else it wasn't like that like this was perfect for me i will say of course if you are playing the bestials and i'll talk about that later but if you're playing the bestials you can play stuff like wallow you can play stuff like dark in this situation i'm not playing them because you don't need them but this was just perfect for the build that we're playing today so guys, I'd be lying to you if I told you guys my side deck was really good for the locals. Honestly, the main deck was just so powerful that I actually ended up just siding. I would side in games two and then I would sometimes side out what I sided in into games three and just go back to my main deck because the main deck is just so powerful. So I'd be honest with you, I really like the side deck, but you know, the main deck is just really that good. I'm, I'm not even lying when I say that. I'm playing three Godarla. I was scared of Fluanderies. I didn't actually see Fluanderies, so it didn't matter, but three Kaiju is not bad. I just need to break the barrier statue. If you can break the barrier statue against Fluanderies, this deck doesn't really have a hard time beating it so that's why i'm just playing the three godarla we're playing
playing the three lightning storm of course just to break boards break back row break the flanderies matchup again so that's why we're playing the three storm three cosmic cyclone of course if you guys didn't watch the vlog by the way i did some dual recaps and some dual replays so you guys can actually see what actually came in what didn't come in how it worked out so if you guys want to watch that make sure to check out the vlog but i really like these cards you have to be playing these six anti-spell was pretty good for me not gonna lie to you i thought this card was gonna underperform but it actually overperformed for me so i did like the anti-spell but the mvp card like i'm gonna be honest with you out of all these cards are all good the mvp card is solemn judgment there are times where i literally just decided to go first make my combo because keep in mind even though this is a pure go second deck if you open two cards you can always end on like apollo plus borlode savage dragon plus a dolka plus a tyranno right which is insane but if you're doing that kind of board you lose to stuff like dark ruler and if you just play judgment on top of that board you know that board is never gonna get cracked so i really like this card this card was mvp it came in pretty much every time i decided to go first or i knew my opponent was gonna make me go first this card came in all the time it was just so good so there's a couple things that I want to talk about. The first thing I want to talk about is the Bestials and why I decided not to play them. I'm going to be honest with you. There's a couple of reasons. One of the main reasons, if I'm being honest and telling the truth, is that this locals that day informed me that no one was playing tier limits. And so I decided to actually take these out. Okay, I'll be honest with you. They just had decided to have a no tier limit locals, even though it was still meta. Like there was still branded Dragon Link. There was still Sprite. There was still Fluanderies. I mean, I didn't see the Fluanderies luckily, but they had the meta deck still. It was just a no tier limit locals which doesn't happen very often so i decided to take these out but i will say one thing the thing is with these cards is they do not synergize very well with the fenrir all right so something i'm going to talk about here is because these are eight cards right i'm just going to talk about this because if you're going to an actual like locals or regionals or something you're going to expect this play tier don't don't not expect to play tier right so these eight cards plus the wallow right the wallow is pretty easy you can work around that these eight honestly were supposed to be these eight so i would take out the fenrir's take out the ash and then honestly like you could probably even take out these two you could even take out the ttt's if you wanted to as well there's just so many different options of cards you can take out but i would suggest these eight taking out for these eight and putting these eight in the main deck all right or you can just not play the sarniers and then you just go six for six and then but 100 if you do this way uh, you would side the fenrirs the only reason you're taking the fenrirs out for the bestials is because they just don't synergize very well this card is just not that good to be honest with you i, I just would cut this completely so for that reason like I definitely would cut three for three. This is not a big problem. The Fenrir's, if you guys cut these from the main deck, you have to be side decking them. They're just so important, right? So I'm just gonna mention that from now. The Bestials are cards that you can definitely put in. The really nice thing about the Bestials is they're non-dinos that can go to the graveyard for you. And then these can make for your pill fodder, which is really nice. And then on top of that, you get bigger bodies on the board. So at least you can try to push for more damage. Or if your opponent has disruptions, it doesn't really matter because you still have some kind of bodies on the board. And then if you're going against tier limits, of course, you know how powerful this is. And then you can also end on a wallow as part of your combo. And then when you end on a wallow, you're just putting up a DD Crow against your opponents, right? So I just want to say that this is kind of like something that you guys can do in today's format. But I'm not so much worried about today's format because today's format is coming to an end very soon. We're going to be going into Photon Hypernova format, right? And because we're going into Photon Hypernova format, something that I would highly suggest playing is Nibiru. Remember how earlier I was talking about I, how I didn't like the Ash whatsoever? Like I'm thinking I'm just going to cut the Ash for the nibs i might not play the bestials going into photon hypernova because i feel like kosta is going to be a very powerful deck and the bestials are just not very good into kosta all right so what i would do honestly is i would just cut the ash and play the nibs so this is something i definitely would consider playing i just swap the three ash for the three nibs now i'm going to be honest with you nib and fenrir doesn't really synergize that well either together so i would actually probably side these as well and the other three cards that come in because we're playing go second still are just three more hand traps i don't think the bestials are going to be that great and i honestly predict that the tier limit matchup is gonna get hit in the next ban list so for that reason i definitely would play three nib take out the three ash and then this could be three of any other hand trap honestly i even considered playing like the one called by the grave and then maybe two cosmic cyclone in the main deck because you know d fissure and all those other cards are going to be very relevant in today's format so for that reason like you know getting rid of some back row especially in a blind go second deck is not a bad thing so even if you're playing like the one called by the grave so you don't lose something like shifter and then two cosmic cyclone and then because this way at least you're playing two cyclone plus a harpies in the main deck and you have out to back row and you can go second and otk still right so i just want to give you guys that option i think the bureau is going to be very important post photon hypernova so that's why i think you guys want to be playing these 100 and that's just some options again this is not perfect this is not something that i've fully 
we've thought through just yet. This is just something I wanted to suggest to you guys because I'm going to be definitely testing this deck out post Photon Hypernova. And then I, because I think this deck is very competent and I think the main deck is just so powerful. There's just certain things like Ash and Nib and stuff that can just be swapped around with each other based off the format, right? So I'm going to be testing. You guys will see a post Photon Hypernova deck profile eventually with it. I really want to top with it. So when I do top with this deck, post that format, then I'm going to be showing you guys the deck profile. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's. I hope you guys understood the logic of why I'm playing what I'm playing, what I wasn't playing, etc, etc, and some different ways to go around playing the deck. So that is it for today's video. I hope you guys did enjoy. I know I went in depth a little bit as to why I chose certain cards, why I didn't choose other cards, and how I think the deck is going to be built post Photon Hypernova. Again, I'm going to be having to test post Photon Hypernova a little bit further, but with the deck built right now, I'm very excited to be playing it because I think the deck is really, really powerful. And I also think it's very underrated and unexpected in today's format. A lot of the cards that are really good into today's format are not really that good into Dino, which makes this deck a very underrated deck. But if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more Yu-Gi-Oh content just like this one. We upload five days a week here on the channel. Combo videos, deck profiles, dual replays, vlogs, all that good stuff. It's right here on the channel. Again, the first place vlog was released yesterday. It's going to be at the top of the description if you guys want to check out the vlog. Thank you guys all for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Goal is 10,000. I know we can make it happen. 16 by the end of the year. I believe in every single one of you. Thank you guys all. And with that, Spanko signing out. Peace.